when did you know that Jesus was alive? Pray about it. Think about it. Because that moment, or lack thereof, will determine your destiny. So on behalf of Spirit Life Worship Church and all of those who are watching us from across this planet, we'd like to wish you all a happy Resurrection Sunday on behalf of all of our church to you. Amen? Amen. When did you know that he was alive? And that's why... We call this day, I call this day, and our church calls this day Resurrection Sunday because it is a constant reminder to us that we know, don't we, church, that we know that he is alive. Can I hear an amen? amen? Now, I knew of him. Are you paying attention? I knew of him. I knew facts about him, but I didn't really know that he was alive. Amen. I mean, he was a figure on the cross and a historical figure that I read about, and I even attended church every single Sunday, but I did not know that he was really alive. And the day that I met him is a constant reminder of the moment that the Holy Spirit walked through me. Now, let me just, uh, just pause here for just a moment and say this. And I was, uh, the, the Holy Spirit reminded th this to me as I'm walking out of my house this morning. I don't want to make this message this morning about me. I, I don't want to make this message this morning about me and, and make me look like I'm any different or any holier than anybody else, but this is my story, church. I want this message to, to magnify Jesus and, and not me. Amen? Amen. It's important that I, I share that with you. But, but this day, this Resurrection Sunday is important to me because this is the day that is a constant reminder that He walked through my life and showed me that he was real. So let me tell you what happened. That this glorious day that he showed me he was alive was a day I'll never forget. And, and for 30 years, church, 30 long years, I went through all of the rituals. I went through all of the religious motions 30 years of Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. 30 years of this. 30 years of, 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 of knowing of him, but not knowing him. And then one moment, in a split second, that day changed me forever. That's why I'm here. So what does the Easter Bunny and colored eggs and chocolate bun buns have to do with his resurrection. For me, nothing. Amen. Although I do love chocolate bun buns. Amen. <laughs> but, but it tells me nothing that he's alive today. He has risen, church. Remember, the enemy has a counterfeit for everything. He has a counterfeit love. He has a counterfeit Christianity. He has counterfeit worship, and he has counterfeit holidays. But the enemy cannot counterfeit knowing him. And knowing that he is alive, church, for he has risen. Now listen, the moment that you know, the moment that you know him, the moment that you know that he is truly alive and he has risen, that's the moment you know he is no longer in the grave, that he has risen and that resurrection power really does live inside of us. How many people know that resurrection power? 
Can I hear more than three amens to that? And that's what Paul wanted. Paul didn't just want to know of him. Paul wanted to know him. Let's take a look at uh, Philippians, Philippians chapter 3 and for me for just a moment. And let's look at verse number 10. And if you don't have your Bibles on you, don't worry about it. We'll show them to you on the screen and we'll show them to you here on the screen behind me. That I may know him. Who's, who's writing this, by the way? Paul the murderer. Paul the murderer wrote this. Who did he murder? Yes, Christians and Stephen. Amen. It was him that held the clothes of Stephen while he was being stoned to death. And then he gets saved. And then he meets him. And he writes this, that I, come on, that I may know him, comma, and the power of his resurrection, comma, and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Do you know him? I think you do. Is it possible for everybody watching me and in this room to know him? Or does he come to just a select group of people? Knowing him is not revealed by the cross that you may be wearing around your neck or the bumper sticker on the back of your car. Knowing him is not going to get you anywhere by church attendance. It's not going to be revealed by the Easter Bunny or Santa Claus. There is only one way, church, one way to know him. And it is through the Holy Spirit. Amen. So 10 years after I was saved, 10 long years after I walked down the aisle, 10 years after Anita and I got water baptized, 10 long years of attending church, 10 long years of pursuing him, I did not know he was alive. And then this one glorious day, I walked into a church, Anita and I together. And I was sitting in the back of the church. And the pastor stood up on the platform and said, The Holy Spirit is a person. And until you know him as a person, you will never know him. I was sitting in the back row and I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me for the very first time. And this is what he said. Today you will be born again, again. Today you will be born again, again. And I walked down the aisle of that church to where the pastor was standing among Hundreds of people. And I was standing at the front of that church and he said to me again, my son, today is the day you will be born again, again. But I said, Lord, I was water baptized. He goes, no, no, no. Today you will be baptized by fire. I was standing there, nice tie on, and all of a sudden, I felt two hands grab me from behind. I looked down, and there were no hands from a man or a woman touching me, squeezing me like this, saying, I love you, my son. I love you, my son. I love you, my son. And I look and I see no hands, but I was grasping for breath. I'm breathing like this. And I says, I love you too. I love you too. And the next thing I remember is I'm on the ground. My tie is flipped up over my head. My coat is off me. And all I can hear him saying is, I love you, my son. I love you, my son. That's the day I knew he was alive. And it can only be revealed by the Holy Spirit. Listen to me. Look at me. You must hunger for this. 
You must hunger to know today that he is alive. Do you hunger to know that he is alive? And if you don't know that he's alive, this is all nothing but a show. Then I can understand why you call this Easter Sunday. Easter is a pagan name derived from a pagan holiday, derived from a pagan goddess of fertility. That's why you have the eggs and all those things. This is not Easter Sunday for Mike DeRoche. This is the day that a man celebrates the day that I knew he rose from that grave, and that's a reason to celebrate. Can I hear an amen? Amen. I'm not making up this story. I'm not trying to be dramatic. I'm not trying to make you become a member of this church. I'm not trying to make you give me more money. I don't need nobody's money. All I need you to know is that he is alive. He is risen. He has... <laughs> Can I hear an amen? Yeah. For 30, 30 years... 30 long years, my prayer to God as a religious boy was, Lord, I want to know you're real. I want to know you're real. So I get baptized in water, Anita and I. We attend church, Anita and I. And 10 years into this, I still did not believe he was real. I don't want religion. I don't want religion. I want the real deal. I want to know he is alive. Paul says that I may, come on, read it, that I may know him and know what? The power of his resurrection, huh? And what else? And the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. You know what that word know really means, church? It's a Greek word, gnosko. Try to say it. Just don't spit on yourself. Say gnosko. That word gnosko means to be acquainted with someone. Do you know the person to your left or right? Are you acquainted with that person? Touch them. I believe they're not dead right now and not yet. God wants you to be able to know him like this. He wants you to know that he's not the Easter Bunny and he's not Santa Claus. He is real. He is real. He is real. And he is here right now. Why am I talking about him? How can you not? Somebody came to me the other day. Came to me the other day and said, you know, I'm a Christian, you know. I said, I would never have known that. I have never once heard you talk about him. Never once. You always talk about the one you love. Can I hear an amen? amen? Now I know some of you folks may know scriptures and congratulations. You've attended church all your life and congratulations for that. You wear fancy clothes to church on Sunday and you even got water baptized. Congratulations. But my question for you this morning is none of that. It's do you know him this morning? Do you know him enough that no matter where you go, no matter who you talk to, you want to say, do you know him? My brother tells me that before my brother and my younger brother got saved, as soon as Mike DeRoche would walk in the room, they'd go, here he comes, here he comes again. Go the other way, run the other way, he's going to talk about Jesus. How can you not? Amen. Now, is it a one-time encounter with him, church? Hello, are you awake? Is it a one-time encounter with him? Do you know that you never die? Are you guys awake? Yes. I see all kinds of smiles on your faces. I like the smiles. Do you know that you will never die? Yes. Why? Because he's conquered death. Yes. Yeah. Do you know that even though you may not like everybody on this planet, you're going to spend all the rest of your life with them, eternity with them, so you better get to like them now. Amen? Do you know that he's alive today? Yes. So tell me, how often do you tell people? about all that he's done for you. Listen, most of the time that I spend with people is always talking about Christ. Ed and I, 
we get together, we're, Ed, by the way, he's a chaplain with me in the sheriff's office right here, and we're supposed to get together and have meetings, and his poor wife, Carol, is sitting home waiting for him to come home, and, we, and all we're doing, we're supposed to have meetings, we're supposed to talk about uh, our agenda items and all the things we're supposed to do, and all we end up doing is talking about Jesus the whole time. And then when we wake up and realize, my God, we spent an hour, the phone rings, Carol says, where are you? We get our work done in five minutes, but really, church, I'll tell you, we know he's alive. Can I hear an amen? Now, I don't mean to guilt anybody this morning into thinking that because you don't talk about him all the time that you're not a believer, but if the shoe fits, I'll wear it. Amen. Let me ask you, when did you know he was alive? Think about it. When did you, each of you in this room, know the day that he was alive and you would defend his reality to the ends of the earth? Tell me, think about it. When did you know that? Was it the first day you walked down the aisle and got water baptized? I don't know. It may have been. But when was that glorious moment that you said, I know you're real? Each of you in this room has a story to tell. Each of you in this room has a story to tell, just like Paul said, that I may know him That's all that matters, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Moses wanted to know him. Moses said, I pray, Lord, show me your glory. David prays, as a deer panteth towards the water brooks, so my soul, Lord, pants for you. Paul said that he longed to know him in his heart. Look, look up here, wake up, look up here. Did you know that it is possible to call yourself a Christian and not know him? Hello, did you know that? Three of you say, yes, sir. I'm going to say it again. Listen to me, all of you watching me. Did you know it's possible for you to be a Christian and not know him? Do you want to know him this morning? Do you really want to know him this morning? Put your hands together and say, Holy Spirit, that I may know you. And the power power. of his resurrection. Is that it? Dad, is that it? That's all I got to do. You've had me going to church all my life. That's it. That is all there is to do. You mean all these years of coloring Easter eggs? Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, you'll never know him like that. I mean, all I got to do is Well, try doing this and not meaning this. Try it. Try doing this, Lord Jesus, by your spirit. I want to know you. Try doing that and not meaning that. Look at Matthew chapter 16. Now, how do we know that he is real? How do we know that he is real? We know that he is real because he lives inside our hearts. Amen. And who showed you that? I said, who showed you that? These are test questions, 10 points. The Holy Spirit. Can you be a Christian and not know the Holy Spirit? Yes, you can. I mean, he's in you. Do you remember in Acts, the book of Acts, when Paul bumped into these disciples coming down from evangelizing, and Paul looked at these disciples and said, have you met the Holy Spirit since you've been saved? And what did the disciples say? We did not even know if there was as much as a thing called the Holy Spirit. It's no accident that we call this church Spirit Life Worship Church. Can I hear an amen? All right, good. Let's read Matthew 16 and 13. Let's read it together and out loud. When, come on, out loud. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? That word men there means common men. What's the next verse say? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some say that thou art Elias, and others say Jeremiah or the other prophets. Then Jesus asked Simon Peter the million-dollar question. Verse 15. Read it with me. Who do you say that I am? 
And then Simon Peter answered the question. Look at verse 16. Simon Peter says, could you read it out loud and make me happy? Come on, verse 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, come on out loud. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. You know how this translates from the original Greek and the original Aramaic? He didn't say that. I know it looks fancy and, and all of it. He didn't say that. I'm going to read to you what he said. And I'm going to give it all the expression and all the drama. Just like Mike DeRoche would say. <laughs> Who do you say that I am? And this is what he said. You are the great I am. You are the anointed one. You are the king of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the lily of the valley and the bright and morning star, the lion of Judah, the son of God, the son of man. You are the king of kings and the Lord of lords. You are my savior, my Lord, my friend, my redeemer. That's who you are. That's what he said. And one last thing he said, he said, you are Yahweh. What does Yahweh mean? God. Do you know the vast percentage of Christians celebrating Easter right now don't believe that he is God? Did you know that? Did you know there are Christians today celebrating Easter that don't believe that he is God, church? And then Jesus answered the question to Peter. Look at verse 17. Come on, read it with me. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. He changed his name. You see that he changed his name. And what did he say? For flesh and blood has not revealed it. What's flesh and blood? Easter Sunday morning did not reveal it. The Easter bunny did not reveal it. Church did not reveal it. Eating fish on Fridays did not reveal it. But my Father, which is in heaven. And then all of a sudden, are you looking at me? I'm going to get very dramatic here now. And then all of a sudden, the lights went on. And Peter Simon Barjona says, you are real. You are son of God. It was revealed to Peter by the Holy Spirit. Look at me. If you have not already been baptized by fire, and you think that you know him, a great revival awaits you. For me, it was 10 long years. I remember the day before I went to this church, and I was as dry spiritually as I could ever be, and I lied to people and told them how great my faith was. I wouldn't dare admit that I was dry and empty inside. A man that attended church every Sunday. That would be embarrassing, wouldn't it? And I walked into this church and this man of God said, the Holy Spirit is a person. And I said, Lord, why did you allow me all those years of darkness? And he said, so that you remember how empty life is without me. That's why I preach this. So let me ask you this question. When did you know? Look at me. I'm going to look at you. You look at me. When did you know that Jesus was alive? And you will never know that he is in our midst right now 
until you know that. The entire gospel here hinges on this one fact. If he did not die on the cross and rise again, look at me, you all have been fooled. In 1 Corinthians, in the 15th chapter, and I'll close with this, and the 13th verse, can I hear an amen from the church? The resurrection today that we should be celebrating and most don't. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is at the heart of Christianity. If he did not rise from the dead, this is nothing but a big joke. Look at me, please. And if you don't know that he is alive, and if you don't know the day that you met him and knew he was alive, then your faith is nothing but a hoax. But you can fix that. You can fix that in three seconds. And you may have to wait a week, a day, a month, or maybe like me, 10 years for God to get it through your thick head. But a day awaits us, that glorious day. Paul writes here in 1 Corinthians 15, 13. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if he is not risen then your preaching is in vain. You're a fraud. And your faith is also in vain. So before we take communion, and I'd ask you all to join me, and all of you folks that here, and maybe even some visitors, that believe and you've been taught in your own faith that you have to go through certain stages to have the privilege of taking communion. Everybody here is welcome to take communion. But there is only one thing that I ask of you. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you that he's real. Ask the Lord to wash you clean and forgive you of all your sins. So let me ask this one final question before I wrap this tidy little sermon up this morning. Look at me really carefully. And I ask that you would all search your hearts. When did you know that Jesus was alive? Pray about it. Think about it. Because that moment or lack thereof will determine your destiny. Close your Bibles, please, and stand to your feet. Give the Lord a big shout of praise or something. Please go without giving the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Please feel free to contact us at www.spiritlifeworshipchurch.com. Our phone number is 386-586-2202. And our service begins 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Can't wait to see you guys. God bless.